Hi, this is Kathy from the North Carolina Zoo coming to you to talk about wild about nature. Today, my topic is water, specifically float your boat. So water is just a wonderful elemental thing to play with. It is the most pop popular attraction in kid zone when we're open, we have the play stream and children are drawn to it like a magnet. Many um, child care centers have water tables and different water features for children to play with. It's great science exploration. Young children, toddlers, love to just take a cup, scoop water, pour it out, re-scoop it, and just they could do that for a very long time. They're investigating water. They're experimenting with the water. They're observing cause and effect. So although it looks like they're just taking water and scooping it in a cup and pouring it, they're actually learning early science. So that's a great thing. But if you want to take it a little further, experiment with things, see what floats, what doesn't, talk about science words like buoyancy, then we'll talk about boats. So I want to show with you, share with you some of my just easy natural boats. Try different leaves. See how well they float. What leaves float better than others? Bark is a great thing that will float. So I found a big chunk at a wood pile. And this, um, this is like a grass that's grown out and going to seed. So it made a pretty little sail for my boat. Let's see how that bark works. Not bad. It's floating. All right. Another thing, if you've got seashells or other items like this, acorn caps, um, I did take a glue gun to affix the stick with the leaf as my sail. So glue gun, maybe older kids or adult help. You can use um, silly putty, sticky putty, Play-Doh, things like that to hold things together too. This is a dried okra pod. We grow okra in our garden and then at the end of the season we let some of the pods dry out. They make a lot of cool things. I thought it looked a lot like a dugout boat. I kind of hollowed it out, used a toothpick and a leaf for the sail. It's a little lopsided, but it's floating. Looks like it'd be a great little ferry or gnome boat. What do you think? Another easy thing will be a nutshell. So I have a nutshell here. I did use a little poster tack and a toothpick to make my flag. I mean, that floats nicely. I think the fairies might like that too. And when you want to get into raft construction, this one is one that my husband made and he used, he's got some sticks on the back for support. He used like twist ties and little bits of wire to hold this together, which might be a little easier than trying to lash with some string or yarn because that gets a little tricky. Um, but there's our raft, like huckleberry fin and a little feather, and it floats. Look at that. One thing you might want to try is see how strong your raft is. So if you've got a lot of pennies or something, you have a lot of the same size, you can see how many pennies you can put on your boat before you sink it. If you've got more than one person making boats, you could have a little friendly competition. Or as a family, you could just test it out and see. So, a couple of things there. Go on a scavenger hunt for things in nature or in your yard or in the park that you're allowed to pick up and see what floats. Now, recycled materials make great boats too. So, a really simple one. Got a sponge. This is one of those scrubby sponges. So I use the, the hard scrubby part on top. Just put a little hole, popsicle stick, and duct tape for the um, sail or flag. Um, I cut it. Younger kids might need a little help with a straight line or even with the cutting because it's a little hard to cut that, that thick scrubby part. But those make great boats. Another really easy is juice box boat. So once it's empty, tape off the hole. This is actually a little skewer with some um, paper for the sail, but you could save the little straw that comes in there because it will go through the box real easily and make your sail out of that. Well, I'm getting a little wind, so it's actually blowing some of my boats around, especially the ones that have sails. You could try different versions of sails, different designs, different directions, and see how that affects your boats. So many things that you could attempt with these. Good old corks, rubber bands, easy, easy, easy boat, toothpick, little paper. I use a little like cardstock for my paper just because it's uh, a little heavier and a little easier to work with. 
Here is a ragu box. Star floats. Yes, toothpick and paper for sale. Um, real simple. My husband cut this out of a pie pan. He's making squirrel and deer scaring things for the garden. But it's not sharp edge, so pretty easy to do. And look at that. Hmm. So this milk carton um, painting kind of rubs off, but um, some colorful duct tape is a great way to decorate it. Of course, I've got the cap on there. Toilet paper tube for the smokestack to make a little tugboat. And Teddy can ride in the boat. Because look at that. It floats. How about that? Pretty cool, huh? I bet that you could find some things around your place where you live that you might could turn into a boat. Or you could experiment with different things and see which things float better than others. Or test them with the pennies. Well, who has the strongest boat? And for my very last boat today, I want to share sort of a STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. I'm going to make a paddle boat that's powered by this rubber band. So what worked best for me was to find, this is a, a, like a canola oil bottle. It's got the cap on it. It's empty and washed out. It, because it's got sort of square sides, it was a little easier to work with. Duct tape. These are chopsticks. Duct tape's holding the chopsticks. Need about three or four inches of the chopstick sticking out so it will hold our paddle. Our paddle is made out of four two-inch by three-inch plastic pieces that were cut out of an old plastic milk jug or plastic water jug. This might be something um, an older kid could do or the adult could do or help the younger child do. And then once you cut those four plastic pieces that are two inches by three inches, connect them so that it makes this shape. It's like a cross shape. This is duct tape. And now you need a rubber band going from one chopstick to the other. And we're going to wind it up. This is where the energy comes from. The energy comes from winding up this rubber band. I'm sure you've seen someone take a rubber band, put it on their finger, pull it back, and shoot it across the room. That's a cause and effect. What's going to happen when I do that? So, let's try out this paddle boat. It's moving around, and if I didn't have all these other boats, it'd probably move around even better. So, you can try that. How many twists makes the best movement? Forwards, backwards, does that make a difference? Experiment and try it out. But it's a fun little thing to do at home. You're playing, but you're learning at the same time. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you again on Wild About Nature.